look at the person you love the most on this planet and say, what would you give to spend one day with that person and don't have to worry about anything? And what if that was the last day? But then what if you were able to get another day because you didn't have to do things that were mandated of you or that were responsibilities. And I mean, just think of the value of that. It's priceless. Jordan was amazing. From when she was real little, she just cared so much about so many things. She had the weight of the world on her shoulders. She loved turtles. I mean, once she started learning about turtles, she found out everything she could. You know, sea turtles, land turtles, terrapins. Uh, she was a turtle fanatic. She loved soccer. She was a goalie. And, you know, she was short, but she had a lot of energy and spunk. Straight A's. She was so self-driven. Uh, did not like getting anything less than an A. I've met a lot of parents that said that, you know, looking back on their child, there was symptoms, there were signals they should have caught, things they should have known. With Jordan, we looked back and said, where were they? What happened? It was just, you know, Wednesday, she was playing soccer. She came up and said, my throat hurts. We went to the doctors on Thursday, and she said, yep, she's testing positive for some strep, but we're gonna put her on a different antibiotic. And it's a little bit stronger. So they gave her the antibiotic, and that night, she came down with a headache. The next day, she started getting sick. Monday, got on the phone with a pediatrician and uh, noticed that every time she tilted her head is when she got sick. So went back to the ER we went, and this time for a CAT scan. Um, once they did the CAT scan, the, the doctor came running out and said, that there's a mass and she needs to get to a neurosurgeon right away. I had to contact my husband, he was in Afghanistan and he had to get home. He was in flight to the US. While she was in surgery, we found out that she had a mass in her brain that was the size of a lemon. This little nine-year-old girl, you know, a mass. But that began our journey into chemo, radiation, the tumor grew back, another brain surgery, more chemo, more radiation, and that was two and a half years, 911 days of constant surgeries, treatments, the most extreme things, medicines, just to give her one more day yeah. to another birthday. One of the great things is our community is very giving and very strong and there's a need. And so because there's a need, people see that and are willing to give. We support families in the community who have children facing pediatric cancer. We try to alleviate some of their day-to-day -day stress by providing house cleaning, lawn care, meals, gas cards, um, haircuts, and we also have a professional photography program. The first thing that comes to mind with the Fairy Godmother Project is love. It's unconditional love. We were kind of stubborn, thought, you know, we don't need help. We got this. Um, we felt, you know, we have, we have good doctors, we have insurance, um, and, and we can do this on our own. And little did we know what we needed until they stepped in. One thing that Fairy Godmother Project did was it helped give us time time we did not have to come home and cook dinner. We found that time 
was very hard to capture as a family. Uh, things like photos. Fairy Godmother offered that. They didn't have to worry about the leaves because someone came and took care of them. And she didn't have to worry about cleaning the house because someone else was doing it so that she could spend time with Jordan. When they knew that their time was limited, she told me what a gift Fairy Godmother Project had been. And it's one of those things that <clears throat> kind of in that moment made me realize the value of what we do. Time to set up a Christmas tree. It's, uh, you know, even after Jordan passed, my son wanted the Christmas tree up. I didn't have it in me. Um, and we'll get to it later, you know, but he wanted that Christmas tree up. I couldn't do it. And even though Jordan's not here, the Fairy Godmother Project, they came, they like crashed into my house, you know, just broke in, cleaned my house, our house, set that tree up for my little boy who deserved a tree up. But because his mommy's heart was broken, it was hard. But they put that tree up and they made dinner. And we got home and he was so excited. And we felt Jordan all through that tree. That's definitely Fairy Godmother Project. Time and moments that you don't have the strength to get through to do yourself. My name is Mighty Bell Barker and I'm a real estate agent from MacDoc Realty. Helping people find the perfect home for them or getting them to where they need to be is just something that I really treasure. On a typical week, I probably work, honestly, about 80 hours. I tend to be a little bit of a workaholic I always find the time somehow to be able to, to help Fairy Godmother Project. She is so committed to us as an organization. I mean, she's an ambassador for us. She goes out there and she talks about Fairy Godmother Project and what we're doing and shares who we are and what we're doing and finds businesses to support us. And I would wake up in the morning and have five emails from her from 1130 at night because that's when she had time to work on it and that's when she would do it. And, and she really believes in what we're doing and, and finds it in her day. I started small and I became more involved with Fairy Godmother Project and truly learning what they were doing, what they were all about. I felt, you know what, I have time to do a little bit more. And that kind of grew into the idea of doing a fundraiser for them. And um, the fundraiser was the very first Stardust Ball that we had last year. It has become something very dear to me. I do it mainly because I feel that, that I'm just so blessed and then any day I know that could change. Knowing that the time that we're, we're finding in ourselves to donate to somebody is precious times that, that they will never you know, be able to get back because we're giving them time to spend with that child that's so sick and so ill for so long. It puts you at, at ease and gives you peace of mind that you can, you know, spend the time doing the things with your child that you want to do, and it's, you know, an amazing gift. When she was first diagnosed with cancer, she was 16. It was a very large tumor. Yeah, I saw a very well, large mass, like the size of a grapefruit, <clears throat> in her back. When we told Kaylee that there was a large mass, that's when, in the size of it, that's when it all started kind of getting scary. Every week we had chemo. We had, um, once a month we had a six-day regimen at Children's. We're talking about Children's National Medical Center in D.C. So I-95 was kind of um, our friend and our, our enemy. <laughs> we did a lot of traveling um, to and from. And we were going through the motions. Kaylee was a senior in high school. and. It was pretty brutal. Yeah. Um, um, I got an email from a friend and a colleague who said she had just met a, a woman from a program that helps families with children with pediatric cancers. I called and Andy answered and um, she said, we just talked a bit and she said, you know, you, your family sounds like someone we, like a family that we could really help. And I said, wow, the timing couldn't be more perfect. We're pretty weary. The paperwork was so easy, and I think within like a day, 
we were part of the program. We were a family of Fairy Godmother Project. I felt like a kid in a candy store. I, I could get my house cleaned. It hasn't been cleaned since last June. And, and, um, and the spring was coming and we have grass. And I'm like, we could get our, our yard cut. <laughs> <laughs> you know, our friends had been fantastic in terms of helping with meals and things like that, but some things you don't really want to ask your friends to do, like clean your house or cut, cut your the grass, grass or, or you know, give you money, and uh, just having you know, those services, unbelievable. Yeah. For now, you know, every, every day is a blessing when there's no treatment and, you know, fairy godmother project is like a you know a miracle you you can you know get money you can get um, you know food and, and things but the real miracle is the time that you are given with your family we have supported more families than I ever imagined we could and um, the reward is beyond anything you can and knowing that here is this family facing something that you hope and pray you never will face and that you can help them, that you can make a difference, that you can be their friend and support them and relieve some of their stress, I mean, you just can't beat that, I don't think. I think it's just a reminder that, that we don't always have the time, but we have the heart and we can do it somehow. We can find a way to help. Time. That's something that Fairy Godmother does bring to families going through childhood cancer. Even if it's an hour, two days, five days, eight months, it's, uh, it's invaluable. Cancer is a lot of dark clouds, but it's also you know, a lot of silver linings. And Fairy Godmother Project has you know, been a really great silver lining, a wonderful gift. It's given us, you know, a lot of time to be able to enjoy each other's company and, and uh, love life.